Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How's everybody doing? Just trying to figure this out. Zoom. Alhamdulillah. Uh, good to be here with you. Uh, I think so quiet. Let me just get a thumbs up from somebody if, uh, if you can hear me. Oh, two thumbs up immediately. All right. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. Um, my name is Joshua Salam. Uh, I am a um, chaplain at Duke University. Um, I have been working there for about three years and uh, three and a half years. And before that, I was a youth director at the um, All Dulles Area Muslim Society. It stands for the Adam Center. Uh, and that was in uh, Northern Virginia. And so I've been working with young people for a long time, maybe almost 15 years. And uh, I'm happy to be with you today. Um, and uh, inshallah, we'll give a khutbah about the, the, the power of purpose. Inshallah, afterwards, if you, if you have any questions or concerns or comments or disagreements, I always um, look forward to that. And uh, inshallah, we'll begin. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الشيطان هو الذي all merciful Allah whose mercy is infinite and whose mercy is continuous هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما Allah is the one who sends his blessings on all of you gathered here today, and his angels send blessings on all of you, so that he may bring us out of the depths of darkness and into the light, and Allah is full of mercy to the believers. Inna Allah ya'muru bil-adli wal-ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha an al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-baqi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Indeed, Allah commands justice, he commands grace, he commands us to be generous to our relatives, he forbids us from being indecent, wicked, and aggressive. He teaches us this so that we may be mindful of him. <laughs> For sure, Allah is with those who are mindful of him, and Allah is with those who do good. And with that, I wanted to begin and start by telling you how um, amazing it is to be of those who know why we're here. That alone is priceless. Uh, you, you can't really describe how overwhelming it is if you reflect on it, if you, if you take time to think about it how overwhelming it is to know why you are here. Because there's a lot of people who are still struggling to figure that out, who are still struggling to, to find out what's my purpose. Why, not only why am I here, like what is all it is here for? Why did, how did it get here? What is it doing here? And as a, as a person who believes in the Quran and believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we know, we know specifically. Uh, and I'm going to share a verse with you in the Quran where Allah tells us specifically why uh, this is here. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa ma khalaqtu wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa liya'budun. I did not create the jinn and I didn't create human beings, mankind except to worship me. That's why I created you. That's why you're here. And I know, you know, theologically, we can go into year-long, 15-year-long, 100-year-long discussion about, uh, you know, so why, why did Allah create us? He doesn't need us. Uh, in fact, right after that, the verse right after that, he says, I don't need anything from you. I don't need you to feed me. You know, that's not why you're created. But he created you so that you would worship him. And worship doesn't necessarily mean Allahu Akbar, 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله that's not necessarily what what worship means it could mean that but it also could mean being mindful of Allah and doing good things and trying to spread peace and happiness is a way of worshiping Allah especially when you do it with the mindset that you are pleasing Allah so everything that we do whether it's going to school playing soccer, playing video games, uh, eating lunch, going to sleep, waking up, anything that we do, if we do it with the right mindset that I need to, I need to take care of myself. Uh, why, why does a person take care of themselves? It's so that you can have longevity, right? It's not because you're lazy. It's not because you uh, are anything negative. It's that you have to have a balanced life, right? I have to have fun. I have to take care of myself. I have to rest so that I can get up and keep doing the, the difficult work, the, the, the grind, as they say, the daily grind. If I'm just always doing the daily grind, you have what's called burnout. And then if you keep going, you'll even become a bitter person. You'll become a person nobody wants to be around, right? So we have to take care of ourselves. So when you play video games or when you go out bowling with your friends, if you do it with the mindset of this is for me to, to breathe, this is for me to relax, this is for me to take a break. And then after I do that, I know that I have to get back out there and I have to stand up for justice. I have to get back out to uh, uh, say what is good. I have to be charitable. I have to be kind to my parents. I have to be generous and gentle with my children. That stuff ain't easy. <laughs> It's not easy being patient with your parents, right? Sometimes your parents can, can, can be difficult on you. And if you have children, we all know that children sometimes can make you go crazy. Uh, they, they just grow up and sometimes are, are ungrateful. So it, it takes effort. It takes uh, concentration. It takes spiritual, uh, spiritual uh, uh, space to do that. So you have to take a break. You have to relax. You have to enjoy yourself at times. So when you do any of that with your mind on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would argue that this is part of your ibadah. This is part of your ibadah. And I believe it falls into the, the theme of the Quran of Allah does not want to make life hard on us. Anything that's in the Quran, anything that's uh, from the tradition of Rasulullah, may Allah be pleased with him. This is for our own ease. You may not understand it at first. You know, it might take some reflection, but that's okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that in this book is guidance for those who ponder on it, for those who think about it, for those who reflect on it. So sometimes even you have to do a little bit of work to get it. You got to do a little bit of work to, to understand. Uh, sometimes it's not so, ah, uh, you know, I get it. Sometimes you have to sit with this information for a while. Sometimes you have to be part of like a halakha discussion group to be like, you know, I read this in this verse, but then in this verse it said this, you know, I'm kind of struggling with it. Yes, that's where the guidance lies. It lies in that space. And Allah says that, that this is a book of guidance for those who do that, to double, to just kind of sit with the Quran and, and reflect on it. So this is, um, this is our path. And I believe that Allah does want this to be easy with us, but Sometimes for things to be easy, you have to go through hardship. With it, sometimes it's at the same time, right? But for sure, we know that if you exercise and you lift weights, that work becomes easier. You can lift things easier. You can run faster with ease, right? But that came with work. That came with you struggling, right? So your coach... Uh, or your trainer who's preparing you for a big uh, job that you have to do, when they're putting you through the difficulty, they're not just trying to break you. They're not trying to uh, embarrass you. In their mind, they're saying, I'm doing this so that when you get to this point, you will be able to accomplish it. You will be able to do it with ease. If you don't go through the training, the work will be difficult. So I think in my own mind, this is how I think about the struggles that I go through with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that perhaps he puts me through some difficulty so that I can go through the spiritual exercise so that later in life or somewhere else in life, 
that, that that challenge will not be so difficult on me because Allah has been training me to, to turn to him, to constantly turn to him and be among those who turn to him. And with that, I want to share another uh, verse with you, inshallah. Now, these are verses that I consider fundamental verses. You know, I have to say I consider because only Allah knows the verses that are fundamental and the verses that are like allegorical and uh, there's no like index in the beginning of the Quran to tell you which verses are fundamental and which ones are allegorical. But for me, these are verses that are that are fundamental that I kind of stand on. And this one here, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَّنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ أَلَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ So this is for those who say Allah is our Lord. And then after they say that, Istiqama, they, 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 they stand right, they go straight. You know, they, there was an old joker that I heard, you know, the directions to Jannah, the directions to paradise, say turn right and go straight. That's it. It's simple, simple directions. Just turn in the right direction and then go straight. Sit out the mustaqim, go straight to Allah. Some people might, I mean, all people will eventually get back to Allah, but some of us are going to be on some long journeys out in the wilderness somewhere and places we shouldn't be. And then we go to Allah. And some people, inshallah, this will be us. We stay on the straight path leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after they say that uh, Allah is our Lord and uh, after that they go straight, then the angels descend down on them. Now I'm trying to just do what's right. The angels come down and stay with them. And then it's a quote, uh, could be the angel saying this, could be Allah saying this. Fear ye not. But this, this tafsir is saying that it's the, the angels who say this. Don't fear and don't grieve. But take these glad tidings, receive these glad tidings, this good news of a garden of Jannah which is promised to you, subhanAllah. Take this good news, take it, receive it of a garden, of a jannah that you can't even fathom. It's just like little hints that kind of give you an idea of what this garden may be, but you can't even imagine it. All I can tell you is that it's gonna be, be beyond your wildest dreams and you will have everything you want and you won't, it won't end. There will be no death. After this transition, after this death, there's no death after that. This is the Jannah. We ask Allah to make us of those who will be in His Jannah. Indeed, Allah is your Lord and my Lord. So worship Him. And this is the path that is straight. Inshallah, we'll take a short break and come back for the second half. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord, and the cherish of everything that exists. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah and his angels send blessings on the Prophet. O you who believe, send blessings on him and beautiful greetings of peace. Sisters and brothers, in the second part of the khutbah, I just wanted to do two things, remind you about this good news and summarize uh, this, this power of purpose and knowing why you're here and knowing where you're going. The good news, again, to me, this is one of the fundamental verses in the Quran. And it's not one time, it's like a theme throughout the Quran. Allah says that one of the reasons he sent this Quran, actually one of the main reasons, I believe, is for two things, to give good news to the people who believe and to warn the people who are rejecting the truth and doing bad things. It's like fundamental, these two reasons are, are 
one, one of the main reasons that uh, the Quran was sent to give good news to the people who are believing and doing good and to warn those who are not. I would simply say one of the things that I try to remember is how does a person act? How does a person feel when they get good news? Okay, think about that. How should a person act? How should a person feel when they have been given good news? Okay, so some of you might be in college here. Uh, some of you might be really stressing over an exam that you just had, or you might be stressing on um, uh, your, 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 your job that you've made some applications to, to different places and you know where you want to go. How does it feel when somebody comes up to you? And go, hey man, you just got an A plus on that exam. How does that feel? How does it feel when somebody says, Hey, you know, that job that you really wanted, the one that was paying so much money and very prestigious and that they giving you an offer more than you asked for. Like for real, alhamdulillah. How does that feel? How should you react? In fact, if you don't react the right way, somebody's gonna say, what's, what's wrong, right? So if I tell you, man, you got that job, the one that they want, you go, really? Right? If that's your demeanor, somebody's like, what's the matter with this person? That Don't you know this is good news? That I, I'm trying to, or if you give, a, if your parents give you a gift or if your friend gives you a gift for Ramadan or for Eid and you get the gift, so, oh man, this is the thing you always wanted. You go, uh, thanks, right? This isn't the energy. This isn't the mindset. This isn't how somebody who received good news reacts. So sometimes I just kind of focus on that and say, how should I be? How should I feel? How should I be walking in the world? If Allah has given me good news, it's not, it's not my mother, it's not a friend, it's not my professor, it's not my boss. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me a book and saying, Joshua, I have good news for you. So I, I feel like my reaction should be, really? Like, what is it? You know, that there should be a smile on your face, right? Oh, and I, want, I want things to be easy for you. Oh, thank you, right? So we try to, I try to lean towards that. I know there's other verses that, you know, kind of make you scared and, and kind of make you worried but there's also enough verses that that say just like the one we read for those people no fear don't grieve don't worry so i i try to stay in that space uh it's not easy but i try to stay in that space of knowing that if i'm doing my best to follow the tradition of rasulullah if i'm doing my best to follow the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then there's good news there's good news and I try to be one who, who uh, does that, you know, says that I believe, and then after that, stay straight. And this is the, the GPS for life, right? So you, alhamdulillah, you know where you're going. A GPS is of no benefit if you don't know where you're going. You don't know what address to put in. You don't know, <laughs> you don't know, uh, uh, you know, if you should stop here or stop there. You don't know. GPS is of no benefit if you don't know where you're going. Imagine that. You can have all the best map that has to be completely detailed. In fact, that's going to be bad for you. If you don't know where you're going and you get a detailed map, you're going to be like, oh, look, there's a Chick-fil-A right here. Oh, and there's a mall over here. Let's go to the mall. Oh, how long should we stay at the mall? I don't know. Let's stay at the mall for, you know, 16 hours. Yeah, yeah, they got so many stores. You're going to get distracted by all the beautiful things on this map. This is life. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He said, all of this is just glitter and distraction. But for some, you know where you're going. So you know that you can stop at Chick-fil-A, just get something to eat. And then what? You get back on 95 and you, you keep going. Oh, there's a mall. Okay, you can stop at the mall. Take a break. I need, you know, I've been driving for a long time. I need a break. Let me check out some stores. But you know that you got to get back on the road and keep going straight. This is the power of purpose. Some people do not know where they're going, and so they get lost in, in, in the world. They get lost in the malls. They get lost in the video games. They get lost in the television. They get lost on all of these things because they don't know how long they should stay. Is it just to relax? Is it for me to just completely engulf my, my resources and my life and my time into? Or is it just there for me to take care of myself and then 
get back onto the real, the real trip, which is me heading straight to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with that, I leave you guys with this, with this message. I hope that it was of some benefit. I hope that it has inspired you to uh, just be smiling, knowing that Allah is speaking to you about this good news in the Quran. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Rabbana atina fa dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaab nar. We ask our Lord to grant us the good in this life and the good in the next. It's not either or. <laughs> don't just grant me the good in the li next life. And we definitely just don't want the good in this life. We ask Allah, this is from the Quran, give us the good of this life and the next life and make us uh, of those who are protected from the fire. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Glorified is Allah. Power. He is far above what people ascribe to him. Wasalamun ala al mursaleen. And peace upon all the messengers. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And praise be to Allah, the Lord and cherisher of everything that exists. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And thank you for inviting me.